Hi everyone, welcome back to another Graphic 45 Brand Ambassador project and tutorial. Now, when I first started thinking about my next one, I wanted to have a look at an accordion album because I love making them, but I wanted to do something and I had it in my head about having it so that when you open it, each one of these had a pocket to fit one of the regular tags. And I thought about putting pockets on and everything, but it just created so much bulk that it wasn't folding. So I've come up with a new little system or new page uh, cutout and scoring, which means that each of the pages actually folds and creates a top loading pocket. And the great thing is with this is you can make it and extend it to have extra pages and go as far as you want. So I used the Alice's Tea Party with the regular tags to make that one. But then I thought, how fun. Oh, I forgot to show. It actually opens the other way as well. So that's why it's the accordion. So we've got both sides. And that side. So on this side, I kept the pattern matching. And on the back, I went for a zigzag. So you can do either way. But then I thought, how fun would it be to maybe use the larger tags? So it was exactly the same um, dimensions of scoring because the tags are the same width. But it was a lot more fun because it was a much bigger project. So I had a go. And this is my version in Come One, Come All. And as you can see, it's got the large tags. And they slide back in. So it opens up like a book. And I've gone for the diagonals here. So when you untie the side, you get that diagonal feel. But then on the back, you get even more spaces. And each of them, as you can see, has a pocket so you can put even more um, items in. So my assignment for this month was um, to feature a collection. And as I said, these can be extended. So currently they hold four tags. So what I thought, if I added more, I'd have six. Tags are double sided, which makes 12. So why not make a 12 days of Christmas version using Letters to Santa? Now, because I'm featuring things from the collection, I've got the patterns and solids, I've got the 12 by 12, and I've got the eight by eight. So I'm gonna be dipping into all three. Now it doesn't mean if you haven't got all three, you can't do this project. I'm just gonna be showing you elements from everything. Also, going to be using the stamp set. So the stamp set, I'll be showing you how, if you haven't got all three, you can use plain um, paper and extend your um, collection. I've also, just for ease and no more fussy cutting, some ephemera assortment as well. So I might add some of them in as well. So I said, it's um, to feature a collection, which is why I've got everything to hand. So. I'm going to put these aside, I'm going to grab my trimmer, my scoring tool and scoreboard and my cardstock and I'll be right back to start the tutorial. So I have my uh, cardstock ready, I'm just using 220 GSM. This is A4 cardstock. If you're an American you've got letter size, um, I'll show you how you can do with that as well. And it's actually a bit easier if you've got letter size than if you've got the A4. But I'm going to show you how to maximise your cardstock without having to um, cut into 12 by 12. Now, my tags, I like to have this round bit sticking out of the top, like so. So I measured from the top to the bottom and my tags were 8 inches tall with that straight part there, which meant... I wanted to make my album pages inside eight inches tall as well. 
So I've got my trimmer. And the first thing we're going to do is cut the front and back page. Now, this accordion album has three styles of pages. So I'm going to call them A, B and C. So the first ones are going to be A. So I'm going to take, we're going to need two of them. They're the ones that stick to your front and back cover. So no matter how long you want your accordion to go, you'll only ever need two of these. And I'm going to cut these at nine. So I'm cutting both at the same time. Nine by eight. So I'm cutting off that quarter of an inch off my A4. So there's my A's. Then I'm going to move on to B and I will need two of them. So this is making my bare minimum accordion album. And I'll show you and I'll explain how you can extend it afterwards. So for B, we're going to keep my eight and a half if you're using letter or eight and a quarter if you're using A4. I'm putting the long edge on the top. And I'm cutting at nine and a half. And again, I've got two of these. I'm cutting them at the same time. So later on, I am going to be scoring at eight inches. So I'm only going to have a narrow little piece to tape on the bottom of mine. But as I said, in America, you'll have eight and a half inches. You'll have just a half an inch on the bottom. And it'll make it so much easier for you. So those are B. And I've got two of them. And then my centre piece is going to be nine and a half. And I'm only just cutting one of these by eight. So that's my C. So this is going to make a four, a pocket one. So four tags. As I said, I'm going to do a 12 days of Christmas version. So what I'm going to do is you would cut an extra B and an extra C. If you wanted to make it further and you wanted 10 tags, you just keep every time you want to add a tag, you just cut an extra B and C. Okay, let me try to keep these in order because they do look similar. Right, let's grab my scoreboard. So I'm going to start with my A's. Now my A's are um, the ones which attach to my greyboard covers. And I'm going to score these at four and an eighth. And then I need a little bit of a gusset. You see the gussets there and it's just a quarter of an inch gusset so I'm just going to skip two, one, two channels to four and three eighths and at the end I need a little half inch to glue onto my um, second page and I'm going to do exactly the same even though it's the opposite direction I need it, four and an eighth four and three eighths and eight and a half and what I'll do I'll just turn it around so that is my left page that's my right page so that's my A's done so now I'm moving on to my two B's now these are the ones which might be a bit different if you're in America because yours will be eight and a half which just means you've got more room to put your tape so for us using A4, we're going to have a line of eight. So we're just going to have this narrow bit, which just means I've got to cut my tape a little bit. That's all. But it just saved having to cut into 12 by 12 cardstock. So now I've got my nine and a half across the top. I'm going to score at half an inch. Then at four and five eighths, so four, 
one, two, three, four, five. So just one after the half. And then four and um, seven eighths. So this five, so that just back one. And at nine. So that's one B done. So again, I've got my second one. So I've scored eight inches to get the height of my page. So half, four and five eighths, four and seven eighths, and nine. And then finally, my C is already cut at eight inches tall, so I don't need to cut anything. The only, only the Bs need that. So this time I'm going to do it half. Four and an eighth. Sorry, four and five eighths. Four and five eighths. So ignore that one. Four and seven eighths. These are the same measurements as what we did last time. Nine. So four and five. Eighths. So ignore that one. I've got to remember that when I come to scoring. Okay. So my A's. What's going to happen now is these half inch tabs are going to be on the left and right are going to actually attach to the other um, pages and create pockets. So I think I've come up with a quite a clever little system. So this large piece, that's onto my cover. So my gusset is going to be on the right hand side. So I'm just going to give them a gentle score. It doesn't have to be harsh. Because it's not to be um, folded flat. And then this bit, the half inch comes backwards. So I've created sort of that shape. But this one, I do want to be harsh. Because the crisper that crease, the flatter my pocket's going to be. So same with this one. And then the gusset ones, just a gentle burnish. I've got this flat piece which goes on to that and then this one goes on to the back like that. It'll all start making sense. So what's going to happen is these two are starting to create a pocket there. B's are slightly different because we're going to have to do some taping and cutting with this one. So let's Fold these back first. So that the two half inches, they're the ones we really want to burnish down. It does sit in the middle, just a gentle burnish. And then a half inch and we fold it backwards. So what will happen now is when I bring this page in, these two create a stick on like that and create that pocket. So I want then the front of this to have some tape so that we don't have things falling out of our pockets. So I'm going to do cut a piece at length and I'm going to cut in half. This is where letter size cardstock is really going to help because you don't need to do this bit. You'll just be able to put your half inch straight on. Okay. 
So I'm just going to put it inside a bit. And now I'm going to just cut at an angle towards that cross and cut. Then in this little bit here, I need to cut out that square. So I'm going to make it a sort of a flat topped pyramid. So I've cut two diagonal cuts and then cut out that square. So I've cut that shape out. And finally, on the end. So that's one B prepared. And I keep burnishing these because I do want them flat. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So let's do the taping first this time. Tape there and tape there. Actually, do you know while I'm here, I might as well save some time for later and put the tape because I will be doing that. So, cut off the corners, so I cut to the square across and cut to the cross, change the angle, and cut off. That just means that when these fold, they won't meet. And cut out that square. So fold these two back. Fold these two. Oh, I haven't done that on the other one. Did I do that? No. One as well. And this one. And then just gently burnish the gusset. So I think the bees are probably the most complicated, and as you can see, it's not really that bad. So I've got two A's and two B's. And now this is the one I've got to be careful with. Let's add the tape while I'm here. It's those two Center ones, ignoring that mistake when I did. Which by the time you've added your paper, you won't even notice. And then fold the other two back. So you've created sort of a M shape with your C. So the more you burnish, the harder you press here, the flatter your pockets will be. So if you've ever had um, an accordion which has, rather than flat pockets, bows out like a mouth shape, that's probably why, because you haven't made these flat enough, so they're pushing out on each other, creating that bow. Okay, A's, B's, C. And I said, if you want to extend, which I have done in my, uh, oh, I'm going to in my uh, 12 days of Christmas one, have an extra B and C. So let's start with A. So if you imagine you've got your grey board, this flat bit with no, no tab sticks onto it. So this then, oh, I haven't got the tape on, isn't it? is then my flap and I'm going to bring 
a B in. Now to create a pocket, of course, I need two sides. So that's where this flap One up. So it's this flap which completes the pocket, if that makes sense. And of course, everything will slide out. So it's this bottom bit which stops things from sliding out. So now I've got two sides there. There's my B. My C has also got flaps. So that'll go like that. So we've got A, B, C. As soon as you get to C, you start working down again. So a B. So I don't want it that way because my two flaps, so I just turn it that way so that that flap sticks to that bit. So A, B, C, B, and then finally an A will complete my album. So hope that makes sense. A, B, C, B, A. If you wanted to extend it, you'd still have your A, B, C, B. You'd put another C here. Let's bring one in that way. And another B. Finishing off with your A. So you go A, B, C, B, C, C B, A. Sounds more complicated than it is. And now I've just changed the whole order, A and B. So let's start with A and B. So it's, yeah, so that's gonna go on that way. So I've got a tab there, but I'm gonna start off with the bottom. So let's just take that off. And, I'm going to fold back my tab and line it up with that score line on my gusset and just press it down. So I've joined them like so. What I did find, when you put your tag in, because it's so far down, what can happen is it can stop there, which is quarter of an inch away from the bottom. For me, it would be half an inch if you're using your American uh, or letter size paper. So what I want to do is do something which will prevent that. So take some tape, it can be any type of tape. I've just got some black construction tape here and I tape over it. And what that's going to do is create sort of a little ramp for it. So when it comes down, it slides over. So otherwise your tag would be sticking out a bit too much on the top. So that's why I have that tape there. So now I can expose some tape here and expose some tape here and bring the two corners up and align. We'll just fold it. Here we go. Got something in the way. Ah, and that's just the tape folding up. So there's that one. And I think it's just caught. There we go. And So now I've got my A here and my B here and my flap here and a little flap on the bottom ready for my C. Now C is the one with two uh, wing flaps, that one, this is A. So that tab needs to go there because I've got a tab on this side already. So again, I'm going to stick the bottom on first. Line it up. There we 
out and open it up and take some tape. That's it, it can be any tape. Oh, make sure that's not on top. And then expose some tape. So I can flip it up to what I think the bulk is. I forgot to trim off the corners. Here we go. That felt much better. And now I can take off the protective tape. So B and C have come together to do that. So now I've got my C, which has got a tab there. So I'm going to grab a B. And which way we go in? That way. Just bring it that way. Easier. Now let's cut off those corners on the bottom just to get rid of that bulk. So again, I'm going to attach the bottom first. Oh, that's the wrong one. This is the one I want. So it's gonna, I'm lining up with a cassette and holding, taping over. Exposing some of the tape on both the sides. And lifting up. So if you had um, more pages, you would now add another C and another B here. This would be the point to do it before you uh, put on your last piece. So my last piece is going to go there. I haven't put tape on it yet. It's going to go that way. So I'm just going to trim off the bottom corner. So let me flip my album this way. And again, I'm going to stick it up the bottom one. So my flap is in there, just lining it up with that score line. Put some tape on. and just make sure everything's in line there we go and that is how you create your accordion and this is what it looks like if you've added an extra B and C so you can see I've got one, two, three, four tag pockets here. But here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the basic album construction done. Then you just need your cover. So you're going to cut two pieces of grey uh, gray board at eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I've already covered one. You can see it's just a little bit larger than your 
um, pages. So in a UK, if you're using your A4 grey board, it's already eight and a quarter. So that's it. I'm really uh, conscious about making the most out of our papers and our cardstock and all our products. And I've used the patterns and solids for this one. So I've chosen the nice red. And again, I've been frugal with my paper because I've cut it at six inches by 10 inches. So I've managed to get both pieces out of the same, um, same piece of 12 by 12. And I've still got that long strip from the top for something else. So I'm going to put some tape onto my grey board. Now, if you saw my first Brander Buster project, my soft spine with Let It Be, this is the same um, technique as I did there. But I'm just going to try and go a little bit faster this time. So if you want to see this bit in slower or in a bit less of a rush, head to the Let It Be soft spine project and you'll see me do this a little bit slower. So I'm not being stingy with the tape. I want as much of it covered as I can. But just to make sure we've got a lot of contact. I'm just taking a bit of glue all around. And I'm going to flip it over. And because it's plain, I'm not too worried about lining it up straight. Especially with those diagonals sending my eyes a bit funny with straight lines. Now, what I do need to do now is just bring in some to protect my table. So I've just got my glass mat and I've got um, a corner tool from Cool Cats. So you want to cut off the corners, but not to the grey board. You want to leave a little space. So this little metal tool is brilliant because I can just cut straight away without having to measure or worry about anything. I put my make sure I put my knife back on. And what I do then is I take a little ball tool. And I just rub it or trace around my grey board. So that means now when I fold, I should get a nice straight line. I'm going to take my tape and run some around the edge of my grey board. And along the edge of my tape, uh, of my paper. So when I flip it over, because I used my metal edge, I got this perfect 45 degree angle. So then when I bring my tape, it'll fit right into that angle without wasting any tape. And the last one. So let's start with the short side. So I'm going to expose the tape and just take off and fold back these two pieces. I do take some glue and I run it down the edge of my grey board. 
So that means that the paper then, when I squeeze it over, it's squashing that glue onto the edge of my grey board. And, uh, and then these two bits are a bit longer because we didn't cut to the grey board. So we just need to press those down. That just means that when we come to fold these in, you won't have any grey board exposed. I can press them down and repeat this side. Take off the two, fold these back, add some glue. press into those bits and, and now we can do exactly the same. Now this time we have got that excess paper in the corner there so we want to make sure we've got some glue on top of that and on top. that way if you find it hard to flip over. So a bit on the overlap down there and a bit on top. So because I did that score line I can just use my tool to bring it up and I can just stretch it over that way. And that is your grey board covered. Two. On this one, I've just taken some distress ink around the edge, so I'll do the same. And at this point, you decide then as well, do you want to add um, some ribbon to tie it? On the Alice one, I didn't, it's just an accordion. On come one, come all, I did. So, so that's gonna be the back. So I'm just going to just eyeball it. So let's just do some tape. the ribbon out of the way and now this is the one now that I did beforehand which has got the uh, pages so what you need to make sure now is that your pockets are on the top the single piece here then with this hinge on the left that's your front and then that's the back obviously so I've marked them front and back and we're just going to glue them and you will have a little bit of red border from the paper. So you just need to be a little bit gentle with it. And some glue. And keeping in mind, it's that score line 
that you want to center around. So I'm going to get a nice even coverage. And then I'm going to do the same for the back. And some glue, getting it nice and close to the edge, and making sure I've got good coverage. And again, I'm lining up the left, right, and bottom, and this left hand score then will come just inside the red. And then we're going to fold it up, I'm going to tie it up, and then that is the basis of your large tag album. We are going to grab some black cardstock, find my measurements and my trimmer. Now again, I'm making the most out of my cardstock because I can get quite a few, I think it's six I can get out of one piece of my A4. So I'm gonna first cut at five and one eighth. And do the same, five and one eighth. And then we're cutting a three and three quarters. Also, it's four I got out of it. There we go. Now, how many of these pockets we're going to make is up to you. It depends on how many pages you want to do it. I mean, on the inside of the covers, um, oh, I have done on this one. On my Alice one, I didn't. And I think on this one, I don't think I'm going to either. I'm just gonna have my cardstock plain. All right, so now, let's grab the scoreboard. And we're going to squat half an inch down both of the shorter sides, flip it over and half an inch on the longer side. So that means we're going to have a three and a quarter inch deep pocket. Now, if you want a deeper one, you just cut your three and three quarters longer. If you want it shallower, just make it shallow. But you do need to keep the five and an eighth wide because that is to fit across your page. Jumped out of the channel there. There we go. Let's grab our tape. I'm just going to put the tape in those half inch channels. Score lines aren't very. Did I have two maybe stuck together? I think yes, because that's one that, that's why I jumped up the channel. I had two pieces of cardstock. Oh, 
Got one more to go. I'm not doing well with my counting today, I can't even count to four. It seems to be only one into three pockets. Okay, grab my scissors. I'm just going to do a cut towards the score line where the two score lines cross. Take my scissors, angle it a bit sharper and cut. So the reason I do that is when I fold it over, those two don't um, cross over. And you're just reducing the bulk. If you just went in a straight line, the chances are those two pieces, those two half inch pieces, when you fold them back, might meet up. And now I'm just going to give each of these a nice, harsh burnish. The harsher you do it, the flatter your pocket will be. So take time and really go around it. Really apply the pressure. Because if you don't, what happens is these two sort of push out and you'll end up having a bow in your pocket. So the sharper you can do this, the better. This is why I like my um, Cool Cats Crafts Teflon tool, because the Teflon doesn't mark your black cardstock. If you had the plasticky one, you'd end up with those shiny lines. So I've done four pockets here. You know, it's up to you how many you want. Let me untie my accordion album. So I've already done a couple, you'll see. So I haven't done any there, but I've done those two pages ready. So let's just do the other four. Let me clear all my tools out of the way. Get a nice flat space. So I'm going to get rid of the bottom first and I line up the two bottom corners and press down. Now you can, like I did in the first video, put some tape here so that your um, tags or photos, whatever you want, don't get jammed there. But it's not so much of an issue here if something's a little bit higher, because you can put your regular tag in, it's going right to the bottom, but if it was a little bit higher, not so much of an issue here as it was when we did the main one. And just... I think I've done... I know, there we are. And some tape to create that round. So now we have a pocket on each. Now, maybe I did plan on putting, let's go for it, because I've got two more. Let's put, place them on the covers as well. And the cover over here. Let's 
So now we have a pocket on each. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight of our uh, pages to cover now. Now, just to save time, I've already done the other side. Now, the other side used um, two sheets of paper. So you get three out of one 12 by 12. Obviously, I've got a tag in there ready as well when I was practicing. So let's see how I did those. So now it's time to start choosing some papers and adding some colour to the album. So there's two ways we can do this. You can use the 8x8 pads or the 12 by 12 The reason being is you're going to use 8 by 4 strips to decorate. So that means with the 8 by 8 pads, we're just cutting them in half. If you've got your 12 by 12 you're going to cut at 8 and you're going to get three panels for one sheet. Unless you've got a non-directional side, you could also get a strip out of the top, meaning you're only going to use two strips. So I've got two options here. I could choose this and have plain and then have the plain red on the inside covers because I've got six sheets in the middle. Or I can find um, three sheets left over from uh, previous projects. So you need three full ones. One, two, back, three full. Yeah, let's go for holly and stripes then. And then I do need one more to do the inside covers. So I'll decide that later on. So first job is to get cutting. So I said we're just doing eight by four. You see, you know, all my projects use nice easy measurements. So for now, I'm just going to cut them all the same way. So A. Title and eight by four. So I got my six of those. Now, in my Alice one, I used a very patterned paper, so I had my pockets and my um backing the same page without flipping to get that pattern continuation. The same here, otherwise she'd look really strange without her head. But if there's no pattern continuation, you can flip sides. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to cut at two and three eighths off the bottom of each of these. Now, it's, oh, neither of them are directional, so it doesn't matter which way I'm doing it. So two and one, two, three eighths. So now what I have is a piece that goes on the top. Oh, I've made my pockets larger this time, haven't I? So yeah, I've measured my come one, come all, where I had smaller pockets. I decided to go bigger this time. So it shouldn't have been two and three eighths off the bottom. Lucky I checked. It should have been three and an eighth. So don't worry, I'm gonna do an invisible repair. So three and an eighth would be there. Put that up. So a little extra. So an invisible repair. I'm just going to grab my double-sided tape. On the back, I'm just going to put it half on to the paper and half of it 
is sticking off. And then we're just going to take this and line it up so I'm butting it right up and pressing down and there we have an invisible repair so what is it three and an eighth let's check Yep, three and an eighth. So I'm going to be cutting three and an eighth off each, the bottom of each of them. Thank goodness I did one and checked. Three and an eighth. Now you see, I'm not too worried about um, keeping them in an order or anything because what I'm going to be doing is creating a zigzag. If I was doing a pattern repeat, I would have been a bit more careful. So three of them I'm going to have this way and three of them that way, uh, making sure the invisible repair one is there. So three that way and three that way. And I'm just going to ink the corners oh gosh it's becoming a bit of a disaster this decorating bit right. with the top ones i'm just doing the top and two sides this is a new distressing so it's quite juicy i think i've got a bit too much ink on some pieces but now this is the, what well, when I was trimming, the back. So you may find you've got from your trimmer a bit of a raised bit. So if you just take your tool and iron it out, you just smooth it out. This is the one with the re invisible repair, so just gotta be careful. And one. two. This is the front. So I'm not going to do the inside cover. Let me open it up a little bit. I can take this off of my invisible repair. That's how I had two pockets left over. I missed those two out. I'll go back and add them in afterwards. So those were the two which were supposed to come from the covers, if you've seen that part. This decorating video is supposed to be the easy part. So I'm just gonna open my pocket to put my Paper in and 
just lining it up with a small black border. And then here, <laughs> I'm going to do stripes and holly, holly and stripes. So this time it's stripes and holly. I still can't believe I missed out those two. I, th I thought I'd worked it out that I'd have the right amount of pockets. But what probably threw me was that this one's got more pages than my original come one, come all one. So these have got just narrow black borders, a lot more narrow than I usually do. I usually do the quarter of an inch, but again, I did this to maximize papers. Right, so after I've done this, what I need to do is go back and make two more pockets. Just tuck this in. There we go. Just add a bit more glue there. So there we go, that is how you decorate then your pocket ones. And originally, I was just gonna grab another um, pattern piece and just put it plain on the front and back. But obviously, I did a bit of a mistake using these two. So two more pockets will be needed. And these were just um, flat stuck on originally. That was the original idea. Okay. So if I'm using my 12 by 12, this time I'm going to do pattern continuation. I, use, I cut my eight, first of all, and then four, and four, and then you've got a four there as well. So this is what I did on this side. These were from the 12 by 12s. So I used two sheets to get two, four, six. And again, it was three and an eighth. I am double checking my measurements this time. Yep, three and an eighth. Now do I cut them both at the same time? The way today's going, I'm not sure if it's the smartest, but I'm going to. Right. So again, just take my distress ink. Now I need to be careful this time, I do need to keep them in an order. So that's the front. Actually, when you're doing pattern, it's better to do the pocket first because that one you can lift and, and it look right. But if you did 
the back first and this needs to be lifted the pocket would look out a little bit so it's better to do the pocket and then it's got that nice black edge and I said if you need it's a bit long so I'm gonna sort of cut it let me just cut a little bit off so I might just do that on the other one as well so maybe for this bit seven and seven eighths is the way to go ah yeah eight inches was when I didn't have the pattern repeat oh I didn't ink Edge. Let me just quickly see if I can lift. There we go. And now that Merry Christmas is a bit better, so let me do that on this one as well. Take off an eighth. pocket first and then yeah that's fine this time and there we go that's how to decorate, ignore that bit, it'll be coming up, and the front. So when you open it up then, you will get that nice zigzag going on. Um, with this being a six pocket version, I've used the whole uh, pack of the 12 by 12, and of the large tags. So I've made six of them, I've cut out using the large die. So I cut all the fronts from uh, the 12 by 12 pack. So I needed two sheets because once you cut it at, I think it's nine inches tall. Yeah, nine by four. So you get three out of um, one sheet. If it's non-directional, you could get one at the top as well, but mine was directional. So I used two sheets and then I used two different sheets on the back. So they're going to, oh, sorry, three different sheets on the back. So they're going to alternate. I think it was two sheets, but I managed to flip some over to get that. So what I did, I said I cut uh, one of them. Then I cut a three by four photo slot die. If you haven't got those, you can just stick a three by four photo mat on top, just slightly bigger. But this does mean I can take them out and change them. And I used just some um, number dies and I cut them out of those patterns and solids after the red solid and a black one as well. And I just mounted the uh, black one, a red one on top of the black one with a slight shadow, just offset it a little bit. And I've done that for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days of Christmas. So then these are just going to slot in. Five. Seven, nine, and eleven. So that's it. 
But I did say I'd show you some paper saving ideas in this one. So I'm going to make some little tags to go into these pouches as well. So I've already cut some using the regular tag die. And I've also cut from the patterns and solids, this plain cream that was in it. If you don't have the patterns of solids, just use some white or cream cardstock. That would also work. And what I'm going to do is use the Letters to Santa stamp set. Let's grab some ink. So what you could do, so I've taken this um, special delivery. Now this is a bit of a risk because this table isn't quite um, smooth. So let me grab some of my other papers. So I'm stamping it down. So I'm leaving it there for a second, just for the ink to soak into the paper. So I'm not pressing down hard, I'm just putting pressure all around. I said the worst thing you can do is take it off too soon before the ink has had time to transfer. And there we go. Even on this uneven surface, I've managed to get a nice printed image. And then you can take some of the snowflakes and decorate the side. But I'm going to use this as like a little journaling tag. No, did I? Yes, I did leave it in here. So that is a great way of... using a stamp set to create some matching papers. So I think if you had an eight by eight and a patterns and solids in a collection, you would be able to make this no worries because you'd need the 12 by 12 to do the cover and the long tags and the eight by eight would just cover the pages. But I just dipped into the 12 by 12 pad as well just because I had it. So let's put Santa bit of extra glue there. Now of course I could use my photo slots there as well if I wanted to add photos into that one. But I'm just going to leave it as it is like so. So that is how you can use the stamp sets to make some more and then of course, I've still got the cover to go and I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but I think he needs to go there somewhere he can fit on. I've also got some of the um, journal card paper. So in the pack, I already cut them up. Yeah, I've already cut them out of the 12 by 12. I've got one in the 8 by 8 I haven't cut up. Ah, here we are. You do have this sheet, which has the photo uh, journal cards on the back. So they look like this from the 12 by 12. So there's a 6 by 4. Let's not put them in the empty one. We can tuck the, oh, I need to trim it down. I think I was a bit off. But six by four would fit in there because our pockets were six and an eighth long. I think it's just my measurements there. They would go in like so. Let's just trim down to that red border. There we 
you go. So that's your 6x4 journal cards as well, which can go in there. So hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and comments below. I really do enjoy reading them and I do try to answer and reply to you. And if you do have a go, please, please do share some photos with me. You can add them to um, the Graphic 45 community page on Facebook or on Paper Crafting with Paul, which is my um, Facebook group. So just type Paper Crafting with Paul and that should pop up. And yeah, oh, ignore that one. And a lovely little album. Then flipping over even more spaces there. So a nice clever way of using the um, accordion book idea, which has been around for a while, but turning it into a pocket album with some very clever ideas. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all again very soon with some more projects.